Before we begin today's episode, we wanted to announce that we have officially launched our Patreon, where you can find exclusive content, engage with North Coast, and get access to perks like recordings from live shows, freestyle tips and tricks, and Patreon-only episodes. Whoa, you're getting access. For top-tier patrons, we'll even have pre-order links for live events and virtual freestyle lessons. Sign me up. So visit patreon.com slash North Coast Podcast and help your favorite hip-hop improv team thrive. Hey, 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 welcome to the North Coast Podcast, where we interview awesome creatives, comedians, and then inspire from their interviews, awesome hip-hop songs. In the studio today, I am Douglas Wydick. I am Mel Rubin. I am Billy Soko. I'm Rob Jean Pierre, a.k.a. Precious Gorgeous. I'm Dr. Brick. Hey. And, we have, hey, and we have a very, very special guest from the Free Daps crew and keys it's keys on instagram i fucked that up one of the most talented freestylers i've ever seen in my life an amazing comedian based out of florida but performing in new york all the time more and more give it up for jordan keys thanks for having me hell yeah florida we're just checking off the free daps box like one number at a time well we're all coming through eventually yeah we're gonna collect them all Oh yeah, you're you're a Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon. card, mm-hmm. but um, hip hop comedy crew. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> a, that's sort of on our business card. Oh really? Yeah, Pokemon card, but a hip hop freestyle comedy. <laughs> crew. That's not wordy at all to put on a business card. No, it's a big business card. It's more of an envelope, <laughs> yeah. sort of like a flyer. A than business a business brochure. Card. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> um, of the available Pokemon, which one's Bowser? Which member of Free Daps is Bowser? Which one is Charizard? And which one is Pikachu? <laughs> which, which, which Pokemon? Which Bowser? Um, okay. Is Bowser? <laughs> Bowser's not a Pokemon. Oh fuck! I meant Blastoise. Blastoise. Okay. The one that was always uh, no, no. traded for Charizard. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. remember Bowser. I don't know what y'all <laughs> are talking about. Yeah. I remember <laughs> Bowser. This oh is the Mandela God. effect at work. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, real and it's happening. This is me shifting from studio brain to podcast brain. Mm-hmm. Just so you all know, I was just trub- troubleshooting wires, and now I'm here talking about blou- Blouser. <laughs> blouser. <laughs> <Two> <laughs> <brains>. <laughs> Douglas Wydick. He also does it a great all. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll let you answer now. I will. Okay. Um, I would say that. Uh, I would say that Isaac is Blastoise because he's very like tactical. And y- you you wouldn't expect it, but it will he'll he'll get you. Uh, Heath is Charizard because he's he's a big personality and he will spit fire at any given moment. And Bar- then I'm Bar- Pikachu because like I'm very I'm a good friend. I'm f- <laughs> I'm fuzz I'm like fuzzy and cute oh, and yeah. comfortable. But like then I will shoot electricity at you. Yeah. And that's not and that's yeah. not a metaphor. I will just shoot you with electricity. You just have a taser. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I keep a couple tasers on me. I say Pikachu and what else? I'm obsessed with that. What are you going to do? Do you feel like people underestimate the darkness underneath your kind of like, because you have like a cheery, charming exterior. Yeah, I have like a country dope face, like a yeah. bit, just like a, <laughs> like. There's a bale over there you very, can try. Yeah, very gullible, very, like I look like a sucker is uh, kind of my face. <laughs> And um, it's like you sell beans out the back of your truck. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I look like your local bean salesman. <laughs> that you know that trope that everybody knows. Yeah, that yeah. that, that very like real truck. genre trope. Yeah. Like as if your signature sound effect would be. Oh, yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. The episode you guys or North Coast did with Isaac, mm-hmm. I think you guys talked about like, does your name suit your personality? Mm-hmm. And now we're moving on to, does your face suit your personality? Oh, does I like it? That it, don't it, know. it doesn't. People doesn't. think I'm nice. You should have a different face. I should <laughs> have a different face. My face should be meaner because, yeah. like, I I do work hard. Ho- like, okay, my face sets a standard of openness and like vulnerability. 
but that is not who I am, but it is who I aspire to be. I aspire to be friendly and I aspire to be nice, uh, but I'm actually a very cynical person. And so, but I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I'm trying to yeah. be nicer. Do you feel, not to get right back into the conversation we mm -hmm. had with Isaac, mm -hmm. but do you feel like a pressure by society to be the person you look like? Oh, man. I want to hear everyone's answer to that. That's <laughs> yeah, interesting. That's, Good, oh great man. Question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, because hmm, I'm going to think about that for just a second. I know dead air on a podcast isn't great, but oh, I am it. going to think. Give uh, us that silence. Take, your, take a second. Mm. You're the Miles Davis of guests. Uh. I think maybe I, I did feel that pressure at one point, but now I think as an entertainer, my favorite thing is to flip that expectation on its head mm -hmm. to be like sweet, nerdy, whatever. And it's like, no, I want like whether it's be good by being dark or saying something that you wouldn't expect or just by like going above and beyond whatever you would expect from the way I look. I think it it's a great place to start from and then twist it, refract it, and and change it. And that's where a lot of the comedy I do comes from anyway. So. Okay. Is this a thing that people are th think about? Do you guys think about this? About how their appearance oh, appears? Oh, all the time. I think about it all. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. I think for me, I, like, I'm, like, six foot three. I'm, like, a, like a brown-skinned man with a beard, no hair. And I feel like, you know, uh, I you know when I perform on stage especially I just feel like people expect something out of me mm. and then I it's in the same way in the same fashion like this I, I try I don't know I, I don't know if it's causality or what but you know I feel like I I subvert it mm -hmm. like in, like intrinsically I like yeah. I want to be able to be like no I don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know what I mean I might yeah. share some of that a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. go deeper on that Ralph. I don't know that I think well I think that I what I think is I have a visage that doesn't you don't there's not anything to expect you don't know what's going on why is this man wearing overalls mm. is wearing a lot of bright colors he's not yeah. smiling you don't know what what I'm gonna do so yeah, I yeah. so I feel I don't I don't feel any pressure and so I'm never thinking about it I yeah. am thinking that I guess the the uh, like I'm like there's a game that I'm playing that I'm subver I'm like yeah. creating conditions so that there's no expectations. This is about you. No, no, no. I I I I want to I want to fo follow up on that. Do you feel like in the way that you kind of subvert subvert expectations just in your look by do you feel that that gives you a sense of control in that nobody else knows what to come which direction to come at you from? I don't and like so you get to sort of manage the situation because they're on their heels a little bit. Mm. You know what? That's so man, that's such an astute question. I don't I personally am bothered by I think there's personalities who like other people on their heels all mm -hmm. the time, and I yeah. don't like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I d also there's something in me that is like almost reactionary, where if somebody mm -hmm. thinks they know what they're gonna get from me, I'm immediately gonna give them something different. I, love I that. can't even help it. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I'm I love that on purpose. Give them because I don't like anybody feeling like they know they've got me figured out. Mm. Well, so it's not that you're facts, trying to con you can't place in the axe. Oh. Face <laughs> the facts, you can't place the axe. No, nope. face, face the facts, you can't place the axe. Face the facts, you can't place the axe. Nope. You coming up here, you coming up in my space. Hey. And I say you're in this place, but I cannot pinpoint your face. How does it match the situation that we have found ourselves in? Is this guy for real or is he just acting? Cause I can't tell what his personality is really like. I think I like it, but but I think his face is a little tight. Mm -hmm. He's got a serious tone. He's uh -huh. got a silly look. I don't oh. know what to think, but I think I'll keep looking. Cause a face the facts, you can't place the axe. A face the facts, you can't place the axe. Nope. Face the facts, you can't place the axe. Face the facts, you cannot place the axe. Nope. Coming into the room and you know I looking silly. Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm five foot ten next to my six foot three friend Billy. Billy. And I'm thinking that we are so cool, we're about to cause a skirmish. Hey. But we are looking silly, we're coming to the face with our little grimace. We're like, hi. 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 I hi. ain't so fun for sure. Ah. I look like an uncle. 
Sure. I look avuncular. Mm -hmm. I'm so fun. I like Billy, but we look kind of tough. Yo, <sighs> Billy, do you feel like people judge you based on your scruff? Oh, yeah, all the time. Did this guy just wake up? I'm not sure, but he needs to put on some makeup because he's got these little foils and his beard has got some white sand. I'm not sure, but right now it feels like night 10. Did I'm he a just wake up? Did he wake up at 5 oh. a.m.? Oh. He come in here. Does he need a soda or a friend? Oh, no. I, I don't help. need that. I don't need anything at all. Give me a basketball. I don't play at all. Oh, I'm just face kidding. Face the facts. You cannot place the axe. Face the facts. You cannot place the axe. Facing the facts. You cannot place the axe. Yeah. Facing the facts. You cannot place the axe. Yeah. Who's this guy? Got people acting cautious. Maybe kind of toxic. Because humans really like to put people inside of boxes. Compare relative to what they know. No, but if you want to change it up, that's why I came here with my bro. Like, we going to switch it, kick it, flex it, refiz it. Every time you got a thought, but you know we going to make you look ridiculous right now. Because the rest, they about to pipe down. Yeah, so you think I'm going to throw a different line out. Face the facts. You cannot place the axe. Throw a line out. Face the axe. You cannot place the axe. Face the facts. You cannot place the axe. You cannot place the axe. Face the facts, you cannot place the ass. Sweet hook, Mel. Thank you, Ralph. Fire. Yeah, Mel. Fire. You Don't. should work for BMI or ASCAP. Yeah, all right. I'll consider it. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jordan, yeah. I feel like Free Daps has been making this huge imprint in New York City. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many shows have you done? And, like, what's the current kind of plan looking like for your New York City takeover? In New York, I believe that last night uh, we did our, I want to say, sixth show. It was, like, our sixth Free Daps show. And, I mean, honestly, we just wanted to be here because this is what's where it's happening, you know? Like, this is where people who are you know freestyling and doing improv and comedy and meshing that in one way or another there's a lot of people here so we wanted to connect with those communities and also there's just a lot of people who don't know that but they are open to new things because we're from orlando which is re it's a really cool city it's a lot more than disney world but it's very segmented it's very separated and so there's people who only hang out near the theme parks and then there's people who only hang out in like the artsy area and, and so new york i mean i'm i know there are people in new york who only stay in their areas or whatever but there's people who are just open to go say hey something new is happening Let's go check it out. And we really wanted to be a part of that. And we've just, we already had a lot of friends here who do a lot of different things. And we we're like, well, we want to come in. And if we have the opportunity, put people on that we know that we think are funny and see what happens. I was going to say, what's the scene like in Florida? Like, what is the music scene like? I, I used to perform out there. Okay. I, um, I, um, I used to rap out uh, in Gainesville. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. I don't know why that's yeah. such a funny sentence. Yeah, I, used to, I used to rap out <laughs> there rap in Gainesville. Gainesville. So. Y'all ever hear uh, uh, Tom Petty? He's a <laughs> really famous rapper. Um, well, Gainesville had a really good like them, hardcore though. punk and punk scene, oh. like rock scene out there, yeah. which is super dope. Yeah, it's a huge music scene. And I we uh, I moved to Orlando as well. We okay. used to do uh, some things. This is way back in the day, though. So, okay. But I'm interested to see, like, uh, I would love to know, like, how Free Daps came to be. Uh, and also, like, your involvement and, and just, like, in general, the scene out yeah. there in Florida, well, in Orlando. Well, I mean, the, the scene in Orlando, like, is, is kind of segmented as well. Like, there's small pockets of everything, but there's not a lot of cross-pollination. There's not a lot of, like, connection happening. Like, there, there are rappers who stay, who would be, you know, stay at venues three to five miles away from where I was performing frequently and I had no idea who they were and they had no idea who we were despite the fact that they've been doing it for 10 years they were making their moves they were making you know impacts in their community but it was so small and I think that was probably the hardest part about it was feeling like there's only so many people that will come to a show and only so many times that they will come and then at, at some point you're just like cannibalizing the same 30 people who are super nice and super supportive but then it's like I can't write enough music to keep those same people coming to a different show every month every couple months or you know some people were doing shows every week and it's like i don't know how to sustain that which is where the freestyle can it kind of came to be there's a coffee shop out in this area called winter park which is like the hip area of orlando it's very hip yes 
You, you know the deal. Confirmed. And there's, there's. Uh, I'm so glad to have. Every time I need to, I'm just gonna come back to you and be like, "Can you confirm this?" Billy? Confirmed. Yeah. All right, perfect. You're a Florida boy too, Dougie. And yeah, yeah, yeah you're like different, different part, uh, east and then south. Yeah. We love, we love, we love a little South Florida. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in in. <laughs> That there's there was this coffee shop called Austin's and every night they have a different open mic and on Monday nights it was a freestyle rap open mic basically a DJ would just spin beats for four hours and everyone would just line up get up rap till you mess up or rap till you feel like you don't have anything else to say you get down go to the back of the line go back up and and try it again and Amazing. so that was honestly like the gym for me every week and that's where we would be and so then we were like okay so this is the dynamic thing this is the thing that people will keep coming back for because it's always new even if it's the same 15 people it you're never going to give them the same exact thing and so having that was like okay now how do we turn that into a show and so like we came at it started in rap started in battle rap and freestyle but we're also huge fans of improv and we're like okay there's there's something here there's a lot of meat here and we should be tapping into that so that's awesome yeah i always i'm always fascinated with correlation mm -hmm. or, or just like the similarities between freestyle rapping and improv yeah improv comedy yeah like there's so like when you talk about doing shows like i'm sure all of us here who have performed are just like how do we keep people coming to the same show and um freestyle rap i feel like similarly to improv there, it's just new. There's just mm -hmm. like you're you're manifesting things that are fresh and unique each time, and so I think there's um, I don't know, it's 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 really awesome to hear that. Yeah. And I think the secondary part that also works with improv is that every not only is it it's new, and people feel like they're a part of the creative process. Like you, when you take a suggestion, when, no matter how you use it, like they're in the show now. And so mm -hmm. that's the other way to keep people coming back is not just like, oh, it's new and fresh, but also like you're connected. We need you. Yeah. You're here. You're part of this thing. Yeah. And and that's why I love what we do. There's also something like the familiar. F how do you say it? Familiar. Famili familiar. Familiarity. Familiarity. There it is. This was a huge day for me. I learned how to say that <laughs> word. Okay, so there's something familiar. Mel learns me. words. Mel <laughs> learns words. <laughs> Mel learns words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I have friends and, and people who have seen North Coast shows a bunch of times. You know, Freestyle Love Supreme, Broadway, same show every night, same format, mm -hmm. always different content. And there's something that audiences who have never seen it before get out of it where they're like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this. And then there's people that repeat audiences get out of it where they're like, I understand the bones of this, mm -hmm. yet... It's like when you watch, I don't know, it's like when you watch your favorite sitcom. Like, you know that there's going to be beats to it, but it doesn't matter. You'll keep watching new episodes of it because you're like, now I understand the structure. I like the structure. It clicks with me. It feels good to watch it. And now I'm just going to see how they spin it this time. Yeah. Uh, so there's something like repeat audiences probably love coming back to Free Dab Show. And they're not like, oh, I've seen this before. Hit me with something new. They yeah. like, like knowing and feeling like they're like one step ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. It's fascinating. I mean, always to think about. Sometimes every single thing that I do and I'm a part of, this is a bad outlook to have. But <laughs> every single thing I have a lot of bad outlooks. But every single thing that I'm a part of, when people come, I'm like, you want to see this? It's crazy <laughs> yeah. that you want to come to this. Yeah. I, I That's thank the voice God. of someone who's seen one too many improv shows. I, yeah. Improv, <laughs> hip hop, like anything that I'm doing, I'm just like, thank God you want it. I can't believe. You. I love making this, and I'm so. That's the feeling I have. Like, yeah. I would die if I couldn't make this. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you want to actually want to come to this. I'm. I can't believe it. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I'm. I'm actually a cynical, cynical person, and that I. I have to take my brain out of it to be like, there's no way. There's no way it's not old. There's no way it's not like wrote at this point but you know people keep coming back and that ins then in turn inspires me even if it's a night where i'm like i don't have the energy i don't feel like like i could i could fall into a rut and do the things i know how to do but then i see someone and he and they're there again and that inspires me to be like oh let me i don't have to go crazy i don't have to be like the, the whole show is scrapped and something <laughs> new for the but it's like what's the new angle what's the new wrinkle what's the new thing that i can introduce that will make them go man that was great 
and I've never seen you do that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think one thing that separates Free Daps from all the other hip hop comedy shows I've seen is that the serious battle rapping background mm. that you have, Heath has, Isaac has. I'm not sure the the gentleman who um, flew in last night for the first. Mark, yeah. He, Mark. He's one of the few people, like, he had a rap background, but not so much a battle background. Uh, but he started battling after joining and, and actually, like, uh, won won a free a local freestyle battle tournament like oh, after cool. he joined and so yeah we really encouraged that aspect of it just because where we came from was like street performing and so you just don't get you get five seconds before they stop you got to give them something and then move on and so with battle rap it's you know there's that instinct of like i got to keep the crowd on my side because if one whack line they're either on his side or they're not listening at all and so it, we really want to train that idea of which is kind of the anti-improv instinct it's like you're not supposed to go for the joke but in our show it's like because we're doing it in outdoor places where you have to capture it's like no go for the joke please yeah. just go for the joke which is really fun like and i i do improv as well but when i'm in free daps it's like no no, no this is i'm gonna go for the joke i'm gonna go for the thing that's gonna bring the, yeah. i'm gonna try to bring the house down every time i'm <laughs> saying anything yeah yeah and it's when you like i really do feel like free daps is in a league of their own in terms of that battle rapping element like you just mm. the setups are just like whoa and there's like homonyms and similes and like w there's plays on words that i've never seen freestylers do except for in a free dap show I appreciate that man yeah. we really pride ourselves on that hell yeah and i feel like is there ever a part of you that's like, whoa, when you have that like rap battle element in you? Mm -hmm. Do you ever have to be like, wait, we're being funny today? Oh, man. Y you know, like I was never the. M OK, I can't say that. I was going to say I was never the most aggressive battler, but I was at times like I'm very competitive, which is another thing that people don't expect. They, well, like, your face doesn't match that ex personality. Exactly. You don't, you don't you look, look like exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> but a regular like, bean salesman. I, I, yes, but I'm the bean salesman that will like take your head off in a battle. Like that's uh, And so uh, every once in a while, there are those moments where like things are heightening and the crowd is so into it. And you're like, oh, man. I'm, I want to win this. Like, <laughs> I want to win this improv game we're doing. Yeah. And and I think, you know, we have come to a point. I think when we first started out, we did – things would get a little heated. Like, not crazy heated, but things would get to a point where it's like – I think Isaac said the same thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's – it's it would get to that moment of, like, no, that – that was not as good of, as what I said. So now I'm atop that. And n I think over the years I've been able to like just tone that down. And over the years, because I don't need it as much, because it, it really is that I want the whole show to rise. And I want if there's a storyline to be followed or a narrative or an arc or whatever, I want to follow that more than anything. But, yeah, th there is uh, starting out like transitioning from battle rap and rap shows to like, oh, I'm at Disney World and I'm rapping uh, mm -hmm. where – it, the the animal comes out a little bit more than you would like for a show. Yeah, yeah. Man, uh, that's making me think about. Um, I just was with some <laughs> friends and we were talking about your shadow, your psychological. Oh yeah, the Jungian shadow. Mm. And yeah. And yeah. I had a conversation with another friend a while ago where I was like, I don't. I'm pretty. I wouldn't say I don't think my personality is dark, but I'm very comfortable with dark mm -hmm. things. I yeah. don't think I'm spooked or squeamish about like sex or death or existential thing. I'm not, I'm, you know what I mean? Uh, so I was like, I don't know. what. So it's like I'm like, I feel pretty in contact with my with my shadow side. And he mm -hmm. was like, that's not the shadow. The shadow is the parts of yourself that you deny and don't want to look at. And so you've helped me identify. I don't like especially as an artist, I do not like the side of myself that is competitive mm -hmm. and I am okay. competitive and it can be awakened. And yeah. when it does, I'm, I feel shameful because wow. I feel like, um, it's anti art. Like anytime I ever find myself in a situation where I'm like competing for improv, I hate the fact that I want to win because mm -hmm. I feel like it's against just practically. It's like, that's not going to make me a better artist. That's mm -hmm. just going to make me win. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I do, but I feel like shame and regret about that. So that that helps me like that's what my shadow is. Not yeah. the the dark side is the part that I don't want to be, not the bleak thought. You does, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Be supportive. <laughs>
then diss them. It's an improv competition. <laughs> Be supportive, <laughs> then diss them. It's an improv competition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, let me this and you. Then I'm going to slap you with my hand, dude. Ah, ha, ha, ha. This is an improv competition. And everything you wish, oh, yeah, believe that I'm a dissum. You can't get it granted. No, you can't. Your feet are planted. Mm. Make sure you move with purpose or you get slammed, kid. Oh, yes. Here we go again. It's the second beat. And I'm going to say I ain't got your back. No, no, no. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Don't diss it's an improv competition. competition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. It's an improv competition. I'm so enlightening. My improv skills are frightening. Man, you think you're good at this? Nah, don't ever test my height in it. I identify the game, and then identify you lames. And if you're trying to come with that old improv, it's not the same. Cause you know I got the flow inside. Yeah, I got a motor. Why? Knock it out, make you, they'll close your eyes. Uh, yeah, you know how they rock me, cause I'm about to diss you, and that's just truth in comedy. Be supportive, then diss them. It's an improv competition. Be supportive, then diss them. It's an improv competition. I initiate a scene. Uh -huh. I'm in there, the water's fine. I initiate a scene. Oh, yeah, I look you in your eyes. Yeah, step out right on the floor. Yeah, go ahead, answer back. Uh -huh. Then when you answer back, I'll be like, that shit is whack. <laughs> I'm the gate. <laughs> I shit in the gate. Hey. But I'm gay. I came to hate. Hey. I came to hate hey. on what you offered. You thought we brothers? You dead in the wall. Hey. 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 Disappointed. Hey. And it's, all. it's an improv. Competition, be supportive, then diss them. This an improv competition. Tag out, tag out, tag out, tag out. Better idea, better idea, better idea, better idea. Tag out, tag out, tag out, tag out. Tag out. Better idea, better idea, better idea, better idea. Yeah, 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 yo, yeah, I'm Coming into the improv ring, yes, you know it's me. Gonna hit you in the face, check out beats one, two, and three. Oh, I'm gonna get you, yes, Mel is gonna scold. And I got my friend right here, his name is Harold. Oh. Yo, my name is Harold and I look like Josh Brolin. But I'm from the early days, I'm the regular Viola Spolin. <laughs> Damn, you know I'm coming in and I'm gonna cause some scorn. I'm earlier than long form, you know, bitch, I am short form. I go um, quick and witty in the city. Do a little quick song, do a little ditty. Uh, you know I do that shit, and I'm not, not shady. And I'm going funny like I was Wayne Brady. Ooh, ooh. and I'm going in because I do it every day. Hey. I forget my line. Uh huh, uh huh. Whose, Whose line, line is, is it anyway? anyway? Be supportive and, and listen. It's an improv competition. Be supportive. Better by D. You're in advanced <laughs> study now. <laughs> uh. oh God, that was the most wow. meta thing we've ever done. Wow. Inside Yay! baseball for days. It really just sort of imploded on itself yeah. at that ah, point. Yeah. Okay. Love yeah. that. That's some, yeah. <laughs> Im improv TikTok is going to love that. Oh, right? no. <laughs> okay. Um, Jordan, what's something that about you that people don't know at all? Like people know you are this comedic force, you're a freestyling force. Like what do you do for fun? Like what's like like offbeat trivia about Jordan Keys? Well, a lot of people don't know I have a kid. First oh, off, wow. people amazing. Are, are very surprised that I have a four and a half year old child. Aww. Dad, and hey. he's awesome. And I like. I think that's one thing that people just don't expect is that I just love hanging out with my kid. Uh, we just started uh, learning to read together. Aww. He's teaching me. He's teaching you how to yeah. read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning to read. Finally. Never too late. Finally. Aww. Yes, yeah. I'm really learning more from him than he is from me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's that. And guys, I'm gonna be. I sh I. I 
I got to get a, a hobby that isn't comedy. Like, I don't <laughs> – my hobby is so, like, cannibalized by my job and vice versa that I can't even – tell what i should be doing at this point but yeah um yeah i i did i bought a skateboard i haven't hey, skated wow. since eighth grade and last year i got a skateboard and so i've been riding a skateboard around and just wow. not trying to do any tricks or anything but i'm just riding around wow. and so i do enjoy that a lot i oh, recently terrible. read um yes please which is like t- not tina Fey. it's amy poehler's mm-hmm. book and uh she refers to like past memories as time traveling in that book so Mm. she'll be like i just time traveled to like another place in her life um and two times this episode i've time traveled Mm. and they was to the exact same year of my life which is pokemon cards and skateboard were like my two favorite like hanukkah gifts i ever got yeah there was no feeling better than seeing the silver pack like waiting for me on the counter knowing i could open it like every night when we lit the candles that's what the pokemon cards came in a silver pack uh and then i got this skateboard that had a eight ball on it like a billiards eight ball not a magic one cool yeah so anyway being 12 was amazing (laughs) (laughs) Has uh, anybody yeah. ever tapped in, anybody ever like thought of tapping into that feeling of like being younger? It's so wild. I wish it's one mu- movie studio would try to capitalize <laughs> on <laughs> yeah, the goodwill that we have for our childhood, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen, Mm-mm. Jordan. Yeah. You don't think there's any money in no. that? No. Okay. No. That idea oh is God. too original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Too original. Sorry, guys. You know, I remember once when I was a, a kid, uh, a bu- me and my friends, we uh, found a treasure map. And uh, it was we we went on an adventure mm-hmm. and we found um, which part of which part of Florida was this adventure? Uh, this, <laughs> this is in uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Wait, really? W- uh, no, no. Oh. no. <laughs> but we did find. He's doing a Goonies riff. Do- okay, oh. right, thank right, you. Right, right. Everyone, calm Hit down. It. Let okay. him finish the Goonies okay. riff. A pirate ship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One-eyed Willie. Yeah. And then we saved the town. Yeah. We saved. Port St. Lucie, Florida. Yes. Wow. Do you remember? I I never told that story here. Lucy's never say die. That that was your. (laughs) That was it. In Port St. Lucie, Lucie, you were the Lucy's. We were the Lucy's. You delivered that very genuinely, and for half a second, I was like, "This is a real story that Billy is telling." (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Acting. He saw these guys with these nice gullible faces, and he's like, "I'm gonna." Take like, them for a ride. I'm going to take yeah. advantage of these bean salesmen <laughs> over here. <laughs> these damn trusting eyes. Can I? Uh, okay. I don't know how far to go with this. There's nothing. Let's uh, go. I, is there a movie that you've watched that you were like, I don't think I'll ever live this, and you lived it? You're like, you watch mm. it, and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And then later in later years in your life, you're like, holy shit, I've lived that. Yeah. That's happening to me. Um, hmm, That's a good one. I okay. feel like I have a few of them. Okay, so uh, as a as a young as a young pastor's kid, I uh, watched this film called Extreme Days, and it was a move. It was a movie that wasn't, uh, you know, it was one of those movies that's like it's not a Christian movie. It's just a movie made by Christians, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, cool. and it was about these three guys, and they skate, and they surf, and they rollerblade, and they do all the cool things that cool kids do, and they like went on this huge road trip to California and then like when I graduated from college like the first big move I ever made for like my entertainment career was like I hopped in a car with three other guys and we drove from Orlando Florida to LA and like had tons of crazy wild adventures in the southwest and it and almost died a couple times and literally just now I'm making that connection that that like part of why that was so cool (laughs) part of why that was so cool is that as a 12 year old I was like there could be nothing cooler than hopping into a car with your like rad friends <laughs> and going on a cool adventure from coast to coast. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Thank so maybe you, Maybe it lived Sweet. in your unconscious and then you replayed it later the way like maybe people replay things from their childhood and mm-hmm. adult relationships later. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I brought it back. We yeah. brought it back. We brought it Ooh. back. Any, anybody else got, got any? Jurassic Park. Oh, any movies? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> guitar stuff. I watched Alvin and the Chipmunks, and mm. there's a part where Dave is playing guitar, and it made a very strong impulse. Like I was just like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And then like <laughs> years later, I was a gigging guitarist in uh, in Florida, actually, oh, nice. where oh. I used to gig as a guitarist. Yeah, wow. I so I think that, that maybe that, yeah, yeah, it's cool when that happens when you're like, "That'll never happen to me," and then mm-hmm. then you find yourself going, "Holy shit, this is I'm living this." Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I yeah I I, I feel like. I have a bunch of those. Some of them are sad. 
give give us one uh, sad happy. I'm gonna matter. give you the sad one. Do it. Um, I really, when the movie came, I still love it. It's not even that long ago. I don't know if anybody has seen uh, uh, uh Manchester by the Sea. Oof. Oh, sad. that is a sad one, Ralph. Let's go. Let's <laughs> get real sad. Right my now. family has not burned. Uh, or or uh, nothing's happened. To my, I don't want a spoiler alert. Mm. Nothing's happened to my family or anything, but I do. I am like. I do relate a lot to the attitude of that character, and I have have felt like, oh, I had this life that I loved. Whoop, it's gone. Mm, I'm in yeah. a completely different part of my life, and now trying to rebuild and find hope. And I'm going, I'm like at the end of the movie now, where okay, like he's good. like finding hope. But it is, I remember watching that movie and being like, whoa, that damn that's mm. harsh and now and i feel like i've lived that that's just one i feel like i've got a ton of those i don't know i i i, I don't i w- always wondered if that is a relatable feeling or if i just ha- have like uh illusions of grandeur. <laughs> well i don't think any of us would be here pursuing performance in any way shape or form if we didn't have some form of illusions of grandeur. Oh, delusions great of grandeur so absolutely. yeah there's a, a minimum level of magical thinking required to get into this field mm. yeah. and then what you have is confirmation bias so it's like, oh, ooh, it's working. And then mm-hmm. it's like, oh, no, it's not working. Oh, it's working. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not working. Yeah. 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 Yep. I don't have a movie that I feel like I've, like, now am, am living in, but I often find that movies I watched as a kid where the main character was in their late 20s or early 30s mm-hmm. and, like, had this whole, like, life where they were so put together and super successful at their jobs, like, like 13 going on 30 is, like, a classic movie where I probably watched it for the first time when I was 13 and then rewatched it again last year when I was 31 wow. and I was like when I watched it when I was younger I was like oh my god when she's older she's like a magazine editor and has it all together she's super rich lives in a penthouse in like the middle of New York City whatever and then now I just rewatched it and I was like Wh- what <laughs> nobody is that successful <laughs> at 30 like but as a kid when you watch movies like that you're like that must be what being a grown-up is like and mm-hmm. like danny tanner is probably like 28 years old you know it's like <laughs> wild to then be wow. at that age and now w- like rewatch those things and be like ah it's different <laughs> so when, yeah, i don't know when i turned 32 and i realized that was when that was how old Lorelai Gilmore was yeah. when the show Gilmore Girls oh, yeah. started. We've had an extensive conversation about this okay. on, a, on an episode of this podcast because I was the only one who knew who Lorelai Gilmore was, Jordan. And so I had to explain. But, I, yeah, we had a whole thing about that because I was like, I'm Lorelai's age, and I was always Rory's age, and what? <laughs> how did I get here? That hit, uh, uh, yeah. that hit hard. It's hard. hard. I know. I know. It's wild. Yeah. That's a good question, question Ralph. Adult yeah. jealousy, I am prone. Fiction telling me a big milestone. Adult <laughs> jealousy, I am prone. Fiction telling me a big milestone. Watching movies and you know what make my heart not sore because I'm thinking about that show you watched called Gilmore. Yes. Wow, my heart going up to the sky. I've never seen that damn show, but I want to be like Laura Lai. Is she rich? No. Nope. Is she fun? Yep. Yeah. Is she happy? Sometimes. Is, does she find the one? Nope. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll think of a different thing. But you know, all this fiction does make my heart not sing. Fiction, uh, I am prone to an adult milestone. Milestone. I am prone to a milestone. A milestone. A milestone. My heart splatters. Oh no, going back to family matters. And TGIF the whole. Because my other family, yes, I'm up. Uh, I think I have to go back. There is no. I really uh, resonated with Balky from Perfect Strangers. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He did the happy dance and uh, also Tony Dance. Fiction, I am prone. I am prone. Want to get the adult milestone. milestone. Do the fiction. I am prone. I really want that adult milestone. I used to be addicted to watching the real world. Cause I would dream about going into the real world. They were five adults in a house. Mm-hmm. Huh, and it was always going down. They started being polite and started getting real. And man, I was like, oh, that's how it's gonna feel. Hey. That's how it's gonna feel when I'm out chasing my dreams. Man, I wanna be like yo, them on yo, TV. Yo, yo, Ralph. Hey. Get this. 
I just saw that the real world was added to Netflix today. Ooh, whoa. So I say, ah. go back and watch the show that you used to watch in the good old days. Wow. On Netflix, it is going down. You can see the little teenage Karamo Brown. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What? Do not ask me why, because sometimes he was famous before Queer Eye. Queer <laughs> Cult <laughs> Fiction. I am pro. Feeling jealous of all the their milestones, milestones to adult fiction. Yeah. I am pro. Feeling jealous Listen. of all Listen. their milestones. <laughs> okay. We was talking about Lorelai. They said there was more to five. By the time she was my age, she had already bought the Firefly. That's an end. Dragonfly. Gotta rap again. Oh, it's Dragonfly. Firefly was canceled once again, but Aww. it's okay. Here we go. I gotta pull out. Y'all was talking about Danny. I was thinking Uncle Jesse in Full House. How yeah. I started it raw. Getting hard with it, dog. Cause by my age, he'd already started and quit his marketing job. <laughs> Fictions, I am prone. Want those adult milestones. Do those fictions, I am prone. I want those adult milestones. <laughs> oh. All right. Hey, thank you for listening to the North Coast Podcast. And huge thank you to our guest, Jordan Thanks, y'all. So Thank you Ooh, so much God. for coming into the studio. Check out Jordan on Instagram at It's Keys. Yes, I T S K E Y E S on everything. Perfect. Check I out Free Daps. Yes. Yes. Yeah. F R E E D A P S. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're a spelling whiz. Shout out to uh, Florida. <laughs> um, and, uh, Jordan, when's your next? Uh, when's your next Free Daps show? Uh, the next Free Daps show, I think we're shooting for first week of March in New Perfect. York. So Amazing. we're happy to be back. Yay. Perfect. So follow them if you want to check that out. Also. Follow North Coast on Instagram at North Coast NYC. And if you love the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. And if you want to support it, check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much. And check out our next show on February 11th. See you soon. Bye. Bye.